Good evening. Advent's a season for us to think about Jesus coming. And uh, this evening we'll think about how he, present tense comes as well, through his word. Uh, it's not just looking backwards, Advent, but it, we think about how Jesus continues to come to us. And so we'll be thinking about that this evening as we prepare our hearts for Christmas. Order of service is printed out for you in your worship folder. Please stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Jesus Christ is the light of the world. Stay with us, Lord, for it is evening. Be our light and scatter the darkness. Lord God, we thank you for this day of grace now drawing to a close. Stay with us and warm our hearts with your forgiving love in Christ. By your word, keep our faith burning brightly, that we may walk in the light of your presence through the darkness of this world. Come and bless us as we worship you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Let us pray. Let the incense of our prayers rise before you, O Lord, and let your mercy descend on us, that we may sing your praises with the church on earth and forever in heaven. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Please be seated.
Let us pray. Lord God, grant us your Holy Spirit that we may hear and believe your word. Cleanse our minds and renew our hearts that we may live for you here and hereafter. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. We hear the word of God from Nehemiah, chapter 7 and 8. The God who will come to us at Christmas is coming here in this lesson. Coming through his word, as we just sang, the law of the Lord is perfect, giving joy to the heart. Here are these exiles. This is after the Babylonian captivity that the Jews have returned uh, to Jerusalem, and they're going to listen to God's word, and it brings them joy. We have that same joy of hearing the words of our God, words that tell us of the Savior who has come for us. When the seventh month came and the Israelites had settled in their towns, all the people assembled as one man in the square before the water gate. They told Eli, or Ezra, the scribe, to bring out the book of the law of Moses, which the Lord had commanded for Israel. So on the first day of the seventh month, Ezra the priest brought the law before the assembly, which was made up of men and women and all who were able to understand. He read it aloud from daybreak till noon as he faced the square before the water gate in the presence of the men, women, and others who could understand. And all the people listened attentively to the book of the law. Ezra the scribe stood on a high wooden platform built for the occasion. Ezra opened the book. All the people could see him because he was standing above them. And as he opened it, the people all stood up. Ezra praised the Lord, the great God. And all the people lifted their hands and responded, Amen, Amen. Then they bowed down and worshipped the Lord with their faces to the ground. The Levites instructed the people in the law while the people were standing there. They read from the book of the law of God, making it clear and giving the meaning so that the people could understand what was being read. Then Nehemiah the governor, Ezra the priest and scribe, and the Levites who were instructing the people said to them all, this day is sacred to the Lord your God. Do not mourn or weep, for all the people had been weeping as they listened to the words of the law. Nehemiah said, go and enjoy choice food and sweet drinks and send some to those who have nothing prepared. This day is sacred to our Lord. Do not grieve, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. The word of the Lord. We continue with hymn 956, Holy is Your Name.
A reading from 2 Peter chapter 1, the joy of hearing God's word is the light that it shines into our life, into our lives, the light of Christ. And it shines that light because, as this reminds us, it's God himself who speaks. The Spirit has guided the word. And so as we listen to the words of Scripture, we are hearing the words of God as he declares his love for us. And we have the word of the prophets made more certain. And you will do well to pay attention to it as to a light shining in a dark place until the day dawns and the morning star rises in your hearts. Above all, you must understand that no prophecy of Scripture came about by the prophet's own interpretation, for prophecy never had its origin in the will of man. But men spoke from God as they were carried along by the Holy Spirit. The Lord will come again in glory. We continue with hymn 319. Grace to you and peace from God our Father, through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. God's word for our devotion tonight is from the prophet Isaiah. We'll read in a few moments chapter, from chapter 40, verses 9 to 11. Dear friends in Christ, how are you coming along with your Christmas preparations? I think my daughter was the first one, my daughter and son-in-law were the first ones in Marinette County, Wisconsin, to put their tree up three weeks three weeks ago already, and all their outside decorations. I did my outside ones the weekend before Christmas because it was 48 degrees and I knew it was getting colder. So those got done. Couldn't put, turn them on until after Thanksgiving, but they were done. Got the tree up this last few days, with the finishing touches on it last night. So those preparations, for us it's done. I don't know about for you. How about uh, what's your calendar look like for the next three weeks? Lots of stuff on it, family gatherings, maybe parties at work or with friends. How about your Christmas shopping? Were you one of those out there on Good, Black, Good Friday, Black Friday last week, Cyber Monday uh, two days ago, small, what is it, Small Business Saturday uh, last weekend? Or maybe you got your lists made out, you know who you got to get gifts for, but... 
Well, the next two and a half weeks are going to be, three weeks are going to be pretty busy taking care of that. Lots of preparations this holiday season, but more importantly for us as Christians, have you set aside time for all the special worship services this month? Good to see you here on a kind of nasty weather night for our midweek Advent service. Two more to go next couple of weeks. Scott Lutheran High School's got their concerts, three of them, I guess, over the next couple of weeks. Then we've got our great Living Hope School uh, program two weeks from tomorrow and Christmas Eve and Christmas Day, and hopefully those are top priorities for you in your Christmas planning. The other thing is, as you're doing all of these things, is it the same stuff you did last year and the year before and the year before that? My decorations, 18 years the same on the outside of my house, if you've ever driven by it. So that's not new. But maybe you've added some new family traditions, especially newlyweds, or first child, or a new child in the family. That may change Christmas planning and preparations a little bit. But what are we really preparing for? Christmas, very busy time, like I said, and those things that we've got, that I've just been talking about, can very easily become distractions, can't they? From what's really important for us as people of God. We're not preparing for something that's merely just a blip on the calendar, especially not from the world's view of things. We're not preparing for, eh, let's get this distraction over with, get back into January, our regular routine. No, we're preparing to celebrate one of the three most important events in the history of the world. Life-changing. An event that's meant to bring us joy and peace and comfort. This season of Advent is a time to, to make sure we're reflecting and focusing on what's important in these couple of weeks of December. Preparing us for the day, well, to celebrate the day he came 2,000 years ago or so. But also to keep in the front of our minds the fact that he's going to come again so that we can enjoy the full fullness of the blessings, the gifts that Jesus has prepared for us. Now, might you think I'm ex over-exaggerating the importance of Christmas? No, obviously not. Let's pretend the medical community has come up with a, a cure, has found a cure for lung cancer. Do you think it would be announced by stapling a piece of paper on the telephone pole next to the rummage sale and the lost cat steins? Uh-uh. Be splashed all over social media, right? Breaking headlines on television. The subject of, of broadcast for hours and on end as to what that all would mean for humanity. Well, in a sense, that's what God's prophet Isaiah is doing in the words I'm about to read for you. And Three times he uses the Hebrew word that is kind of like a big flashing light. That here's something important. If we're, you know, used to typing on a computer, we'd put it in the big, boldest font we could find in all capital letters. Put gold stars by it, around it. It's the Hebrew word, hine. It's through, used three times in the words I'm about to read. And that word, sometimes it's translated behold, sometimes look, or see, or hear. Today we might say, yo, heads up. Here's what Isaiah has to say. This is more than just another holiday we're getting ready for. You who bring good news to Zion, go up on a high mountain. You who bring good news to Jerusalem, lift up your voice with a shout. Lift it up. Do not be afraid. Say to the towns of Judah, Hine, here is your God. Hine, see the sovereign Lord comes with power and he rules with a mighty arm. Hine, see, his reward is with him, and his recompense accompanies him. He tends his flock like a shepherd. He gathers the lambs in his arms and carries them close to his heart. He gently leads those that have young. You see, with these words, Isaiah was preparing the people of his day, and God's people for us still today, 
for something super important. That God's presence was ready to come into the world. That he wants to come into your life. So three times he puts that flashing light next to his message. Now this is not just a cute little baby whose birth we're preparing to celebrate. Hine, here is your God. And then he goes on to describe him. First he says, it's the almighty, sovereign Lord of the universe. But he's also the tender, loving shepherd we have come to know and treasure. Yeah, Isaiah lived at a time where he knew that well, na national disgrace was in the cards for the people of Israel, for the Jews. The nation's downfall was coming. It was still a century away, but the spiritual and moral decay had already begun to set in. Jeremiah was going to say it was going to last 70 years, captivity in Babylon. Yeah, the Jews would be allowed to return to their homeland, as we heard in, in the first lesson tonight. But they would be under the domination of first the Persians, then the Greeks. Then they, they had a little freedom for about 30 years, and then the Romans would come. But Isaiah say, saying here, somebody else is coming. A new king. A conquering hero. The one about whom all the prophecies had foretold. It would be the coming of the servant of the Lord. He would come, Isaiah said earlier in his book, in chapter 7, he'd be born of a virgin. But he'd be called Emmanuel. God with us. He'd be called the wonderful counselor, the mighty God, the everlasting father, the prince of peace. Yeah, this wasn't just going to be a cute little baby in a manger. Somebody, even the unbelieving world, can smile as they walk by. No. We can't let the celebration of his birth be swallowed up by worldly commercialism, by partying, or a jolly old elf in red. Hine, here is your God. He's the Lord of armies. That's what the Hebrew literally calls him here. He's the ultimate general, creator, ruler of the universe. Pastor Wentner focused on that in his sermon 10 days ago in the, on Christ the King weekend. Yes, no one greater. Here is your God. But it's God who came in great humility. Displayed at his birth at Bethlehem. Humility. I read a number of devotions each day. The one yesterday from Martin Luther College talked about, he em about the Messiah emptying himself. Used a picture I had never thought of before, but it was something I was, was familiar with. Talked about, well, the, the author talked about wrestling with his son when his son was like three, four years old. I was a wrestling coach for Woodlawn School back 30 years ago when my son was four years old. And he'd see me out on the mat with the, the upper grade kids and he'd want to roll around on the mat or in the living room carpet with me. And we would do that. And, you know, I was a lot lighter then, but maybe a little stronger too. But, you know, I would let him turn me over and, and get some of the moves down and learn them and pin me. Could I have kept that from happening? Of course but I was emptying myself so that my son could learn, so that he could grow. Well, that's what, in a sense, what Jesus did. He emptied himself. Oh, he still had the power, the strength. Look at the miracles he performed during, during his ministry here on earth, even raising people from the dead. And then, to culminate it all, in what really looked like total humiliation, beaten, bloodied, and battered, he went to that cross, but he, in doing so, he was battling the forces of Satan. Rescuing all mankind from the slavery to sin and death and hell. Showing, come Easter morning, that he was the champion. As he raised himself from the grave. Yeah, this was no pushover, milk toast kind of ruler. Defeated our spiritual enemies when he rose from the grave and promises that he will do the same for you and me. 
and for all humanity when he comes again on the last day. Now, that last day, for some, it'll be a resurrection to eternal torment. But for others, for you and me as believers, it'll be a resurrection to eternal life when our Savior God will display his mighty arm in giving us that new and perfect life in heaven. Yes, in a, here is your God, the one who guides and rules the world for the good of his people. Maybe it doesn't always look that way as we look around in our world today, but he's there, pulling the strings in the background until ultimately he does bring this world to an end when he will display that powerful arm ready to dispense the, the blessings and, sadly, the curses. So, dear friends, we better sit up and take notice of that. In A, here's our God. Dare not be complacent when it comes to acknowledging Jesus as that almighty Son of God. And that's because we also know him as our loving shepherd. A lot of people, you ask them their favorite section of the Bible, a lot of them they say Psalm 23, right? The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not be in want. The beautiful pictures that are laid out for there. That's what Isaiah is saying, the exact same thing here. And, and other prophets in, in the Old Testament did that as well. Yes, we have someone who guides us, cares for us, all those who put their faith and trust in him are part of his flock, his family. We're going to share in those blessings he earned by his work. Now, we don't deserve them. We know we're born into this world with a sinful nature that, well, we can't ever think we can make our own way into heaven because of our disobedience. Jesus, you know, the, the Lord of armies, he's given us his law, and, and if we think we can make our way to heaven by our own standards and ignore the truth of the Bible, we better think again. But this child whose birth we're celebrating, well, he's that good shepherd. When we fall, when we feel weak and defeated in this life, when we recognize our sins and our spiritual shortcomings, he picks us up, carries us close to his heart, and reminds us, I'm the good shepherd who laid down. He's the good shepherd who laid down his life for us. That's what Isaiah is saying here when he carefully tends those with young. That's all of us in a sense. That's what our good shepherd's about. He's got your best interests at heart. And his love for you, as I said, he came into this world willing to die for you, promises to send the Holy Spirit to you. That's why we emphasize being in the Word because that's the tool that the Holy Spirit comes to us through that powerful gospel. That's the voice of our good shepherd calling to us, encouraging us, reassuring us that he died for us. Here's your God, but he's also your Savior. So whether you're new to the faith or veterans in your spiritual life, you can be rest assured Jesus is always there for you, guiding you so that you reach that home in heaven. And what peace and comfort that should give us as we go through life as we deal with the busyness and chaos of our, our world in this time, especially this time of year, through his word, we can receive the, the, the promise of his strength, of his presence, as we face the trials and obstacles of life. Yeah, all too often we are like we little lambs, doubting, fearful, unable to deal with, with forces that might, could destroy us. But he uses that power as the Lord of armies to provide for us, to protect us, to bring us safely to our heavenly home. Whatever we need to make it through this earthly life, here's the one, the one true God who does it, does it for us. So dear friends, as we go about our preparations over the next few weeks and then begin that celebration, ask yourself, What's the world see as I celebrate Christmas? What are the people around me? What might they learn about my life as a child of God in the way I celebrate? Your outdoor decorations, maybe they proclaim a message from the scriptures about whose birth this is. 
or in your conversations and, and, and when you talk about people with people at work or school or, or neighbors, or family members, you know, what's the priority in your life? What do you tell them? Is it the partying and the gift giving and buying and selling? Or is it gathering around the word? Filling your heart with that message that a Savior has come. Do we, by our lives and by our words, do as the Christmas carol says, do we go tell it on the mountain as Isaiah encourages us here? That here is your God. To people who otherwise, yeah, they may pass the manger scene and say, oh yeah, that looks cute. But do they know from us what it's all about? So I'd, something I want you to do before you go to bed tonight or very in the next day or two, Pick out someone in your life, friend, neighbor, acquaintance, coworker, classmate, who doesn't know Jesus, and in some way or another plan to tell them, to lift up your voice from the top of the hill or in a quiet conversation that this is what Christmas is about. So prepare yourself and include someone else in your preparations so that you celebrate and that they too may celebrate by coming to church with you, by listening to a prayer you say about Christmas or words you share with them about what makes Christmas important. Christmas says, Hine, here's your God. May we do the same with our lives. Amen. Please stand. The peace of God which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Amen. You may be seated. We sing the next hymn.
Please stand. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. For the leaders of our synod and district, for all pastors in Christ, for all who are servants of the church, and for all the people of God, let us pray to the Lord. For all who govern our nation and for, our, for all public servants, that they may be upheld and strengthened for every good deed, let us pray to the Lord. For those who work to bring peace, justice, health, and protection in this and every place, let us pray to the Lord. Lord For those who bring offerings, those who do good works in this congregation, those who toil, those who sing, and all who await from the Lord great and abundant mercy, let us pray to the Lord. Lord For favorable weather, For an abundance of the fruits of the earth and for peaceful times, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, For our deliverance from all affliction, wrath, danger, and need, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, For the faithful who have gone before us and are with Christ, let us give thanks to the Lord. Help. Save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Rejoicing in the fellowship of all the saints, let us commend ourselves, one another, and our whole life to Christ our Lord. Hear us, Lord, as we pray in Jesus' name. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. (laughs) Lord God, all holy desires, all good counsels, and all just works come from you. Give to us, your servants, that peace which the world cannot give, that our hearts may be set to obey your commandments. Defend us also from the fear of our enemies, that we may live in peace and quietness. Through the merits of Jesus Christ, our Savior, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Let us praise the Lord. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Please be seated. We'll join in the verses of hymn 788.
Good evening. I have two quick announcements. Uh, the first one is on Sunday we announced uh, that uh, uh, Pete Wilson passed away over the weekend. The funeral for Pete will be on Saturday, December 14th at noon in the, in the old sanctuary on the other side of the parking lot. Uh, there'll be a visitation from 10 till noon uh, for that service. Again, next, not this coming Saturday, but the, December 14th. And then the other announcement is, uh, I mean, you can see the trees... They look great, but they don't look Christmassy yet. Uh, we're going to be putting decorations on them this coming Saturday, starting at 9 in the morning. You're all invited uh, if you'd like to come and help us with that.